So I have before me the ASUS Republic of Gamer Zephyrus M16 versus the HP Omen. The real question is, can you save about three to five hundred dollars if you choose the HP Omen over going with the M16? Now the M16 is more of what I consider a premium laptop. It's got nicer build materials. It's a little bit stiffer of a design chassis. It just feels more premium. The aesthetic, it's thinner, it's lighter, more on the go friendly, slightly better battery life. So the real reason to choose the HP Omen in my opinion would be great performance still, but you can get it at a cheaper price. Now let's jump into the key features and differences and then we'll get into the performance benchmarks to see if this has enough performance for you to maybe save that money or if you wanna go for the more premium build and maybe a little bit better performance. Let's check it out. Now first and foremost, as we open up the two laptops, you can see that the M16 opens up completely flat where the HP Omen kind of ends up at about a 45 degree angle and the screen's very bouncy. This is probably one of my biggest complaints with the HP Omen is this very bouncy screen. And then as far as the screen flex is concerned, it just has quite a lot of screen flex. Now, screen flex isn't something that necessarily is dangerous, like your laptop's gonna break, but to me, it just shows a slightly improved build quality if you have less screen flex. The materials are more hardened, the screen is just a bit stiffer, and so it just shows for quite a bit better quality. And as you can see in the M16, does not flex as much as the HP Omen does. Now, as we go ahead and take a look at the interior of the laptops here, you can see that we have two full-size keyboards, not including a numpad. However, we do have this cluster of keys on the right side of the HP Omen. Somewhat of a useful cluster, you can jump into your HP Omen command center, you can go to the home button, and page up, page down, pause something, print your screen, get a calculator, and then of course you have your arrow keys. You can do a lot of those same things here with the function buttons on the top of the M16. You can jump into your Asus Armory Create Center here, mute your mic, do audio up and down, et cetera, et cetera. As far as the keyboard is concerned, I prefer the keyboard on the M16. It has just a nice soft touch, quiet keyboard. The HP Omen is great as well. The keys just don't feel as nice under my fingers. Now, as far as the trackpad is concerned, they both have a nice quiet click. Uh, but however, the M16 trackpad is just ever so slightly bigger than the HP Omen, just by a hair. They're so similar, but the M16 is just slightly bigger. Now, we also have webcams on both of the laptops, and of course, the M16 has upward-facing speakers, so you're gonna get a better audio experience out of the M16. Now, here's a quick audio sample of a lot of what we talked about. The keyboards and the trackpads in use, the speakers in use, and then I'm gonna give you a quick sample of the webcam for each of these laptops. Here is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus M16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. The webcam for the HP Omen, obviously you're hearing the audio right now. It is a little grainy in the background, but the color of the skin tones seems very natural. And so it doesn't make you really orange or super blue or green. So I really like that about it. Now, before we move on, as far as the ports are concerned, let's go ahead and check those out real quick. On both of the left side panels, you can see that we have network ports, we have HDMI, we have a mini display port on the Omen where we do not have that port on the M16. We have a USB type A, USB type A. We have two USB type C's on the M16, only one on the Omen. And then of course we have our headphone jack. 
Now, here's an SD card reader, full-size SD card reader. As we flip over the laptops, you can see that we have a micro SD card reader on the M16. Kind of a killjoy. One reason that I would actually lean towards the Omen is just the ease of use. If you're shooting on an SD card, go ahead and slide that in and you're good to go. But as you can see, we have two USB type A's over here and one USB type A on the M16. So. As far as usability is concerned, the Omen actually has a slight advantage because you would not need a dongle if you're shooting on SD cards, which to me actually yields quite a bit of an advantage. Now, as far as the color accuracy and color gamut range is concerned, the M16 is gonna be slightly better and also a little bit brighter. You can see those results coming up on the screen now. So if you want a slightly better panel, I would lean you towards the M16. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, you can see that we have the 16 by 10 aspect ratio ratio on the M16, where we do not have that same 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the HP Omen 16. We have a 16 inch screen, but they still gave us a 16 by nine aspect ratio. I kind of disagree with that. Well, how can I disagree with it? It is what it is. I kind of disagree with that decision. Um, I wish they would have gone with the 16 by 10. I just think it's a better aspect ratio overall. So as you can see there, definitely a little bit bigger on the M16. Now, as you can see for the weight and thickness, the HP Omen and the M16 are almost exactly the same. The back of the M16 is slightly higher, the front of the M16 is slightly shorter. So overall, they're the same height. And the weight and thickness is very similar. From holding these two laptops, I can't even tell. Now, regarding the upgrade path of these two laptops, the HP Omen is superior. You can switch out both of the RAM sticks, or you can only switch out one on the Zephyrus M16. You have eight gigs soldered to the motherboard and another eight gigs that is swappable. So if you want a more customizable, upgradable laptop, the HP Omen will be your pick. Now concerning the battery life, because the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus M16 comes with a more customizable Armory Crate Center, being that you can switch to iGPU mode, you got a lot more customizable options in the fan and the optimization of the GPU, you're gonna get better battery life out of the M16. Quite a bit of better battery life. Not like insanely better, but definitely better than the HP Omen. So if battery life is important to you, then I would go for the M16 to be worth that extra cost. But if it isn't, then the Omen will be great. Still gets good battery life, but just not great. Now, before we get into the performance benchmarks, let's talk about thermals. Now, the thermal results are pretty close between these two models. You can see the results coming up on the screen now. I think Intel is doing a really good job of thermal management, especially compared to a lot of the Ryzen models coming out. A lot of the Ryzen models are still pretty hot. That Ryzen 9 6900HS, the Ryzen 7 6800H, um, these are pretty, some pretty hot CPUs. So if you want cooler temperatures, then I would definitely go ahead and choose Intel. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the head-to-head -head benchmarks. Now, the reason I gave kind of a pricing range that was pretty wide at the beginning is because the model I have in front of me is the i7-12700H and RTX 3060, but you can also get this in an RTX 3070. So the RTX 3070 version is about $1,869 at the recording of this video, and the RTX 3060 version is about $1,699 at the recording of this video. Now the M16 comes with the i9-12900H and the RTX 3070 Ti, putting you at around $2,149 at the recording of this video. So there's quite a bit of a sliding scale here between these models, but you can save quite a bit by going with the 3060 and the HP Omen, which is what's going to be on the charts. So if you think about these charts coming up here, Whatever the charts are for the 3060, just know that you're gonna have about a 10 to 15% bump in performance if you were to put an RTX 3070 in this laptop. All right, so jumping first into the single core Geekbench and multi-core Geekbench performance, you can see that the M16 scores about a 1781 in single core, where the HP Omen is not that far behind at a 1648. Then jumping into multi-core performance, you can see that the HP Omen actually comes slightly above the i9 and the M16. So again, still a great performing laptop with the i7. The i7 and the i9, actually this year with the 12th gen launch, I've seen pretty similar benchmarks between the two. Now let's not uh, hang on there too long. Let's move on to Cinebench R20. As you can see in R20, we see a little bit of a spread here, a 6716 compared to a 6373, but still very close. Now looking at R23 single core and multi-core, you're gonna see a little bit more of a spread there in the single core, a 735 compared to almost a 1900. 
but nothing outrageous. And then of course in multi-core, we're gonna see quite a bit of spread there in 1800 versus a 1500. So depending on what you're doing, um, you could see that R23 gave us quite a bit bigger of a spread than any of the other simulated benchmarks. Now, life is not made up of simulated benchmarks. So let's go jump into the real world tests here. Check out the Blender Classroom test first and foremost. I'm running more and more laptops through this test, so this list will build over time. Uh, but right now, here are the results between the Omen and the uh, M16. As you can see in Autodesk 3ds Max, there's not a huge difference, but actually in Autodesk Maya, the HP Omen steps up a little bit higher. I actually ran this test multiple times for the Zephyrus M16 and kept getting this lower 200 score. So I thought that was kind of odd, but if you're a Maya user, you might wanna check out the HP Omen with that extra 40 points of performance. For PTC Creo, the M16 moved back up the list definitely outshined the HP Omen by almost 100 points. So if you're a PTC Creo user, then the M16 should be your pick. And also in regards to SolidWorks, we saw about a 20 point difference in SolidWorks as well. Now looking at After Effects and Photoshop, After Effects was pretty close at about a 40 point difference, but then when we got into Photoshop, it was almost a 100 point difference. However, keep in mind that the Photoshop benchmark, anything above 800, uh, is gonna be plenty of performance. So honestly, between those two scores, I don't think you'll notice that substantial of a difference between these two laptops. So these two laptops are definitely capable of running After Effects and Photoshop. If you wanna see a substantial bump in performance, I recommend upgrading your laptop to 32 gigs, which you could easily do here in the HP Omen by swapping those two RAM sticks, or 24 gigs, or perhaps 40 gigs by swapping the one stick inside of the M16. Now in regards to video editing, we saw great export times out of both of these laptops for 4K and 6K. As far as the drop frames are concerned, 4K is gonna have no problem, you're gonna have zero drop frames. As you move into B-RAW and RED footage, you're gonna see an increase in drop frames, but nothing dramatic. These Intel 12th gen processors and the NVIDIA GPUs are matched very well. We're seeing substantially decreased drop frames in 12th gen compared to 11th gen, which I was super happy about. That's one of the things I wanted to see the most uh, was the decrease in drop frames inside of Premiere Pro for both RED footage and B-RAW. And we saw that this year, which is exciting. Now, if you are a DaVinci Resolve user, then I'm gonna lean you towards the M16. It was quite a sliding scale. The Omen had about an eight minute export time for 4K, where the M16 was about five minutes and 17 seconds. To me, that was quite substantial, being that this is a nine minute 4K clip. I thought almost double it's a little much, a little much for me to say that's even close. So definitely want to lean you towards the M16 compared to the HP Omen if you're a DaVinci Resolve user. Now, punch for punch, can you go ahead and save some money between the M16 and the HP Omen? If you're not a DaVinci Resolve user, absolutely. And if you're not a PTC Creo user, absolutely. Overall, I feel like these laptops are pretty neck and neck in performance. And really, the biggest difference is going to be the usability, the on-the-go friendliness, maybe slightly better battery life in the M16, a little more premium aesthetic. Uh, that's why I would go for the M16. However, if you're more on a budget, looking for something a little more budget friendly and affordable, the Omen is a fantastic fantastic device. I've been recommending it for years and I stand behind it. It just continues to be a fantastic workhorse for creative professionals. My video editor actually uses an HP Omen, Intel 11th gen. She loves it. It works really well. So uh, got to pick your potion. M16 or Omen, choice is yours. Links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase. Likes if this video has brought you some value and subs or YouTube cards above if you don't want to miss out on the future or next videos. I'll see y'all in the next one.